Hi there, it's Shell. And today we are making more pockets. And I was kind of looking on the internet this morning and I found um, some, some ideas that I thought would work. You know, um, as I've mentioned before, you tend to kind of make the same pockets over and over again. Well, you know, I kind of sometimes go on Pinterest and this is a play on a greeting card. So what I did is I went ahead and I glued some coffee dyed paper to some music paper. So I just chose the part that didn't have tons of words because I wasn't sure how it would turn out when I'm done. And so like this one, there's, there's like one word or something. So it's just mainly music paper. And I went ahead and just glued on some coffee dyed paper. Now I'm going to cut those down. And I'm going to just cut it in half pretty much. What I want is about an 8 by 5 sheet of paper. So I'm going to cut those down real quick. And I'm going to go ahead and I'll be right back after cutting those. Okay, so what I'm doing, I just had to bring this up a little bit closer, is I'm just trimming around that coffee dyed paper, and I went ahead and cut it down to an 8, and then I'm going to cut it down to 5. Um, let me see what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, so I have an 8 there. Okay, I did something wrong, but I'm not sure what I did. <laughs> so, you want a 5 by 8 sheet of paper. Uh, let me look on this one. Maybe I can figure it out. Okay, so I want an 8 this way. Oh, I tell you. It's been that kind of day to day. It is. We have had a pretty large snowstorm come in. And... That's what I'm doing. It just went through my head. <laughs> but we had a large snowstorm come in, so uh, we kind of had to rearrange a few things that we had planned for today. Okay, so essentially this is an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. So I'm going to go ahead, because it's 8.5 here, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this down to an 8. And you could use scrapbook paper whatever you want into and then I'm going to cut it five here and then so you should be able to get two from this this goes back to my card making days but I saw this idea and I thought it was really really cute but again you could use some scrapbooking paper that is double sided and I'm going to go ahead and cut some of those using this scrapbook paper. It's double sided and I just thought that would be kind of fun to make up some and stick them in my stash. So I'm going to cut down some butterflies and I think you kind of need either double sided paper or you need um, like coffee dyed paper and music paper something like that something that kind of has a little bit of interest to it and you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second let's do that I think that'll give us like seven pockets when we're done and you guys know how I like to work in an assembly line so I am going to let's here's the edge right here so I'm going to go ahead and cut this down to an eight and then we'll do five five like that. and be sure and save all your scraps of course I know you guys will so I have one there one there we'll do eight there five and five so essentially they're pretty simple, you know, to get the basis of these pockets. And again, we are working on seven of them. 
So I am going to set my cutter aside. <laughs> and I have to tell you guys, I wanted to sew this morning and kind of show you guys, you know, what it looks like with sewing. And I don't know what's wrong with my <laughs> normal sewing machine. And it wouldn't work. So my husband worked on it for a while and oh, I tell you I don't know what's going on but we came up with a solution and I'll show you guys that in a minute so now you're just going to kind of fold these like you would fold a greeting card and if I could find my bone folder I could do that I'm going to fold this one this way And that way I'll have, you know, several different pocket designs here. So I'm going to fold one this way. And if there's a directional one, I just want to fold it up on the outside because when we do our other technique, then we'll have it going in the right way. But when you're putting it on the inside, you want to fold them down. And, you know, I think you'll kind of understand where I'm coming from with that in a minute. Okay, so now we have our coffee and music paper. And, you know, like I said, I was just looking on Pinterest and I saw this idea and I thought, ooh, <laughs> what a cool idea. You know, that would work really well for pockets. It's a different style than I have seen. And it was just a green card, you know. So, I'm going to go like that. Okay, so we have seven. You know, you could stop there. However, we want to, I think, take it up another little, you know, notch. So that they're a step further along in our process. So I'm going to try to <laughs> find my ink blender and stuff. We kind of shoved everything to the side because my husband was working on that um, sewing machine all morning. Okay. So I don't need this yet. And I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm working on wood today. This is our antique um, wood table. So I will probably need a scratch piece of paper to work on so my husband doesn't kill me for getting ink or something on his table. <laughs> but it's necessary for today. Okay, so now all we're going to do is you're going to put both of the open ends on the top and your right side you could do your left side if you wanted to you're just going to kind of bring it down to the bottom and you're just going to place that point right there on your um, fold and that will be our pocket so I'm going to go ahead and do that and you know I have about an inch and a half or so on this side and then you just fold it like that. Pretty simple. Uh, this one we could go from the left side, you know, just to change it up a little bit. Like that. Let's do a right side. <laughs> I have to think what I'm doing. Okay, there they are. They would be right side up now if I, you know, fold it the right way. So I guess they would have been right side up. And then this one, let's just fold it to the left. But how fun and how quick to make these little pockets. And you can fold it as much or as little as you want on the top part. See, I have it a little bit off, but that's fine. Because, you know, it's a fairly simple little project. That one, let's fold this one. To 
to the side over here. And there's our pockets. So I'm going to grab my scissors. And anywhere that there is like a piece kind of going over, you can trim that if you want to. That one wasn't big enough to really to worry about. But like this one, I just want them to fit nicely on my page when I glue them in. This one right here, see how it has the little overhang there? And just a little bit on the bottom. Overhang there, a little bit here. And that one looks pretty good. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and do some ink blending. I'm using Distress Ink. And I'm just going to go ahead and go all the way around it. That way, whenever I pull these out for my um, junk journal, essentially they're done. <laughs> you know, sometimes you just want a pro, you know, something done. You can leave it in any stage from here if you just want to, you know, cut it and fold them. You could leave it like that if you don't want to. You know, you decide on how far you want to go with your projects. So, with your sash. So, I know some of you guys find this really monotonous. <laughs> but, I really feel like it's a necessary step for junk journaling. You know, I just, I really like the yellow edges, kind of the brown edges that it gives my projects. And then we're going to do just a couple of, you know, more detailed embellishments and a couple of different ways on these guys. So they're not all going to look alike. They're going to be, you know, slight differences. But we're really starting to build up our <laughs> pockets for our scraps. Hope you guys are following along. <clears throat> but yeah, we had planned some work and stuff. And the snow here, they said, is going to be some of the worst in this decade, I think. In the decade, yeah. And... Uh, we definitely got snow today. You know, they've been closing roads. All kinds of things going on out there. We were listening to the scanner earlier. And, yeah, there's a bunch of bad things going on. So, we said it's best not to leave the house. So, we're sticking it inside today. Staying inside and seeing what we can get done. Uh, Clint was on the inversion table earlier he's trying to find something that will help ease the pain in his back i'm not sure it worked but <laughs> you know it's an idea so no, i'm crocheting sophia <laughs> sophia seriously oh, I wish you sophia me. needs some daddy love okay come on <laughs> lay down so, well, I only have a couple more. It goes pretty quick, you know, especially when I'm talking to you guys. And I was really excited to try the music paper. You know, you can use book pages, you could use old magazine pages, you could use anything that you can dream up, you know, essentially. <coughs> So yeah, we've just been kind of resting, and Clint's trying to start feeling better. He's really been in a lot of pain lately. He has uh, fibromyalgia and a broken disc in his back, and arthritis, and <laughs> he's falling apart. He's falling apart. Had issues since he was about 30, 35, 
about 35 or so. Yeah, 16 years or so, and it's been really bad. And it might be, you know, the barometric pressure or whatever that stuff's called. You know, that might be a big part of it. My sister called me yesterday and said that she was in so much pain. And she said she notices as soon as she starts hurting, the um, storm or whatever will come in about two and a half days later. So, I told her she should be a weatherman. <laughs> okay, so, now, of course, you know, you could stop here, stick them in your stash, pull them out as you need them. But, I don't do that. <laughs> so, I want to do some sewing, like I told you guys earlier. However, our sewing machine wouldn't work, the, that one. I mean, we have plenty of sewing machines. So my husband said, use mine, use mine. So I'm going to show you guys this. It's really heavy. But check this out. How fun is this? And it's a crank sewing machine. So instead of like sitting, standing on a pedal, you use that. So I'm going to see if I can make it work. <laughs> oh, I just took my shoe off so I could step on the pedal. <laughs> The thing is, it doesn't have any other stitch than just a straight stitch. So, we're just going to use a straight stitch on all this. And I'm going to go ahead and just stitch along my fold. And by, and it doesn't have a backup either. Uh-oh, I already broke it. <laughs> I did something. Okay. I know, I know. I don't know what I did. I think it must not have been in the bobbin in the treasure, right? Or something. Oh, maybe the bobbin. Yeah, the bobbin's here. Sure. Crafting with shell. <laughs> I that's what yeah, I think it's something wrong with the bobbin. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, so, I think it's fixed. <laughs> I don't know what was wrong with it. Um, so, I'm just going to just kind of play, and I just really wanted some stitching on here. Now, again, you cannot uh, uh, backspace or anything, so, like, on the edge of each part, I will have to put a little bit of glue. I zoomed out so that you guys could kind of see the whole thing, but this is this machine is seriously 103 years old, and I do have like one from the 50s. I just didn't pull it out. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off if I can figure out how. There we go. So and then later I will come back and do that. Um, actually, maybe I should just glue it now before it comes unraveled. Does it look okay? Yeah, looks really good. So I'm just putting a little bit of glue on <coughs> both of the um, start and stop points. So that way it doesn't come unraveled on a future, you know, time. And then I'm just going to sew this without my glue getting in there. Let's see, I'm just going to wipe it. <laughs> I don't want my, gl my glue gumming up my, my needle. So yeah, this whole thing is done by twisting the... Uh -oh. Hold on, i got to see what I did now. <laughs> Maybe it's not my day to sew. Well, you're Okay, let's try it again. Don't baby the handle. Just go. Yeah, it was. It felt like it was tangled or something. Yeah. Okay, there we go. So, yeah, this is 
kind of a little workout and a craft session at the same time. <laughs> this is what my husband actually uses to sew his quilt together. He loves like the old machines like this and it was what 50 bucks at a yep. yard sale here and he just kind of re makes sure they're in good shape and then he uses them. We have a couple of treadle machines and I have a 50s machine and this machine. So I went ahead and sewed that and then I am going to go ahead and sew around the edges just to kind of give it a little bit more decoration. Uh, this machine does just have straight stitch which doesn't bother me but you know a newer machine would have tons of different stitches that you could use. But it's kind of fun to play with anyways. I feel like I'm from somebody. I'm from the 1800s. <laughs> the late 1800s I suppose, huh? And it goes through paper really nice, you know. And then I just leave my needle in there. And then you want to make sure that your needle is up when you pull or else it will snap your thread. That was one of the first things I learned when I was practicing on here. <laughs> so let's, I thought that would be kind of fun to show you guys. So again, I am just putting a little bit of glue front and back and that will hold it in place since I can't lock it in with my stitches. Okay, so when you put this on a page in your journal, you could glue around the edge. Here's a pocket here. And here's a pocket, you know, here. Uh, let's do one more. We'll do a colored one. Like a more colorful one. And let's see how I want to do this. I think I'm going to do this slightly different. I'm going to leave it open. And then I'm just going to stitch all the way around. So, I'll show you, you know, what my purpose is there. If I have enough in my bobbin. <laughs> we kind of just grabbed a bobbin and had a uh, brown thread in it. So I think it's definitely quieter than a traditional sewing machine. Might not line things up as well. Uh oh, out of bobbin. <laughs> I'll be right back. Okay, so my husband got me started on this, and here's the bobbin here, and then we're just going to fill it up. He had to show me how to how to get it um, started. <laughs> I have to admit it's a little fun. Isn't it a so blast? Amazing. It is a lot of fun. I think it's a blast. But this thing is moving back and forth. To make sure it's even on your bobbin. That's kind of cool. Uh oh, another problem. What's wrong? I'm running out of thread on the uh -oh. sole. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Okay, let's see if I can get it all on the bobbin. You guys ever have those days? <laughs> Okay, and then I pop that like that, and then this comes out. Okay, so we have the bobbin, and look, I have a green right beside me. We're going to use that. I am keeping this because it's wooden, and uh, we have some ideas for this. So, I'm going to keep my wooden spools, and let me get this all set up and ready to go, and I'll be right back. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay guys, I'm back. <laughs> so, 
I am going to pick up where I left off. I went ahead and glued that while I was waiting for him to show me how to do all this stuff. So I shouldn't have any issues with it coming out. Oops, wrong way. So now I am using some green and some, ow, some um, brown. Yeah, I guess that's right. <laughs> I can't see it as well with the green. <laughs> And that's fine. You know, I like to mix and match my colors of thread, just depending on whatever I have right there, whatever I picked up at a yard sale, you know, whatever. I'm kind of doing just a little. Well, it's stuck now. I don't know what I did. I did something. Okay. And then. There we go. <laughs> you have to be forceful, he says, so I'm going to be forceful with it. I wonder how many calories this burns. <laughs> wonder if they have it, like, on a uh, website somewhere. <laughs> Okay, and then I'm just going to sew it, bring it there, and pull it. Okay. And again, I'm just going to put some glue there. I'm going to push this out of the way. And I thought I saw a string. And just put a little bit of glue at my finishing point and my beginning point so that it does not, you know, come unraveled. So, and then that one's going to be like this. <coughs> so, I have an idea for these. I'm going to pull over my sample book just kind of give you guys an idea. Um, most of the things I put in here, I will be moving and hopefully on Saturday and Sunday, I will show you how I am going to store my samples because it is getting full already. And I have a lot of notes in here. Like if somebody sends me their address or happy mail or something, their address goes in here so that I can refer back to them, maybe send them something as well. And I don't want it to be so big that I can't do that. So, this one I am thinking, you know what, I think we'll go ahead and just glue it in here because it's not going to hurt anything. And I just want to kind of give you an idea of what my thoughts are. So I'm just going to glue on both sides and then glue along the bottom. Again, I am using art glitter glue. I always have this listed in my details below. And then I am just going to put that right here. I do like to cut my pockets down to five inches across so that I can always, you know, come back and um, refer to those. Refer to those. Sorry, I was thinking about something else. <laughs> it will fit typically my size uh, books. If you are going to have like a smaller book, then of course you just want to adjust for that. So. So this is one idea I had with this, is to take it like this, maybe put, <clears throat> you know, a little decoration or something. Let me kind of trim this out, just to give you a completed idea. Uh, as soon as I find my scissors, here they are, right in front of me. So I'm just going to cut out, let's cut out the green butterfly. And 
pan. I'm just going to fussy cut around it. Whenever you're fussy cutting, if you're new to this, you know, leave your scissors pretty straight and turn your papers. I remember once I was cutting out, I was doing some kind of fussy cutting, and my mother-in-law says, oh my gosh, what kind of scissors are you using? You make it look so easy. And it's not the scissors per se, it is turning your project, your papers. Because really you don't move your scissors when you're <coughs> fussy cutting. Too much anyways. But if you do your... Yeah, it's like a blizzard out right, right now. You can't even hardly see the um, the highway. Yeah, it's really getting bad out. And they're closing some of the county shops and stuff and saying, stay, stay in, stay in. So we are listening to them. And I don't even think we're going to make it down to the post office today. It's that bad, you know. And it's not that far, but... We have to walk along the highway if we walk, and it always makes me nervous because, you know, uh, people could skid and just kill you, you know. They've been almost hit in this area a couple of times. Okay, so there's our little uh, butterfly. Let's put some lace or something. I have lace. The cats keep getting a hold of my lace and Clint keeps saying, honey. <laughs> so I really need to clean up my area. <laughs> He's like, do you know how many times I have picked up that lace? <laughs> so let's go ahead and just, you know, just a little decoration. As you guys know, I don't like to put a lot of bulk, <coughs> especially on my pockets, because I just think that they, um, you know, they're a fixative pretty much in your book. On this one, you could have totally put bulk here because you can pull it down. So if you wanted to decorate this little piece and you're going to pull it down, then you could put bulk there. I didn't add any bulk, but I think it'd be really cute to add some pearls or something on this little butterfly. And then I'm just going to go through here, and again, I'm going to find a paper clip. Let's take this one, just because it's simple. And you could paper clip this down if you wanted to. So you could kind of go through both of them and kind of put it there so it's not like just dropping out of the book. So you could affix it like that. You could maybe put a magnet here. You know, sometimes I have those little tiny magnets. I put one here, one here, and it would snap it closed if you wanted to do that. But then you can pull it down and you can journal here. And then there is a pocket here. So really there would just be like one pocket unless you wanted to, you know, put your paper clip here. I'm trying to get it, there we go, get it caught. And then maybe you just want to put something cute here. So, say you just do, you know, here's your tag in the back and then do trying to go through all my little scraps that I have right here. <laughs> you know, just a little something there as well. Like maybe a little journaling card that you've made out of a little tag or something. <coughs> and you could do that. You'd have to remove all of these before you pulled it out to journal, but, you know, I think that would be a kind of cute little idea. Isn't that adorable? Look how cute that looks. Okay, so... And then I would maybe put this one. This one, you don't have to do as much, you know, to decorate it. You could put lace or something here. You could put whatever you wanted to here. And then you have a pocket here and a pocket here. So it's pretty simple. If you don't want a pocket here, you could glue this down. Glue three sides and have a pocket coming out here. 
So that would be a cute idea as well, I believe. So let's see. I think that is so cute. Look at that. <laughs> so cute. Okay, let me move that out of the way. And I think that was all I wanted to talk to you guys about today. Um, I think these are really simple. They're not really difficult. You know, again, you could come behind here and maybe put a piece of lace, you know, however you wanted to. You could put a little piece of lace there. Actually, let's just do that because, oops, why not? And, you know, just kind of do your own style. You know, I think that's important once you figure out what your style is and you know I say that because you know it took me a while to figure out what my style was now I'm starting to really feel the style and you know I know that I want you know I don't want like steampunk or something like that because that's totally not me but you know I know what I like and I think that's what you kind of have to figure out and things come together so much easier once you kind of figure out what you like. You know, and I think that, you know, it's kind of a learning process. But look at that. Isn't that pretty? I moved you guys up so you can see all the sewing and you're pretty far up there now. But I think we're fixing to call it. Move it down a little bit. There we go. But isn't that pretty? I love that. I'm going to go ahead and put lace on the back too. This is definitely one of my favorite styles. Is kind of, you know, a little bit lace and a little bit of coffee dyed paper. Things like that. So, I'm just putting some art glitter glue all the way across. shall see what we shall see <laughs> or not that's going to be hidden because I will more than likely this one will be glued down you could certainly make this into a floating pocket if you wanted to that would be cute maybe just so you know like right here and then you could put like all different kinds of little goodies on the inside you could lift this if you wanted to, and you could journal underneath with the coffee dyed paper. But let's just get a little bit of some goodies. Of course, I didn't take them out of my book. Oh, I tell you guys. Today has definitely been that kind of day. I was thinking, should I just skip making a video? But I know how sad you'd be. <laughs> But isn't that cute? I like these. Let me know what you think below. Be sure and leave a comment. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Uh, be sure and hit that subscribe button and the little bell. I am posting videos daily. Thank you guys so much for watching. You'll have to let me know what you think of this idea. Thanks for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye.